Hello, this Science of Sport video is part of uh, BTEC Sport and Exercise Sciences Unit 2 Functional Anatomy. We're looking specifically at learning aim F, where you are required to analyze how we produce movement and the connection between the skeletal and muscular systems. We're particularly looking at um, part two today, which is about question 11. So in the first video, part one, I tried to illustrate the differences between your question 11, the eight mark questions, and the question 12, the 14 mark questions. This one specifically looks at question 11 only and tries to help you interpret the questions, prepare for them, make an analysis table, and ultimately write a good quality eight mark answer. So let's just remind yourselves of the specification content. This is the Learning Aim F uh, specification content. And you can see that I've clearly colored some of the content red. This is the muscular content. And the reason I've done that is because it's not required for question 11. Only skeletal system content is required for question 11. And just to remind you of that again, this is slides that were in part one. Um, where we analyzed how to interpret question 11, the eight marker, and the differences between the question 12, the 14 marker. This directs you towards the skeletal system. This requires both skeletal and muscular system. So let's focus in on one exam question and the process you might go through. Interpreting the question. Well, the easy bit at the moment Knowing it's question 11 means you know you're going to be talking about the skeletal system only. Knowing it's question 11 also means you know it's eight marks, but do check. So eight marks are available for this answer. You need to therefore develop sufficient answer to gain potentially eight marks. If it's a very short, a brief answer, you'll miss marks. Then we go to the text and the content of the question itself. So it specifically asks you to analyze the appendicular and axial skeleton. Now that again reiterates that within your answer, you'll have to refer to these two parts of the skeleton. You must refer back to what the question wants you to talk about. It's telling you to analyze whatever movement it wants in relation to the axial and the appendicular skeleton. So you must obviously know what these two sections of skeleton are comprised of. Then we know that it's directing you towards three joints or three body areas, the shoulder in this case, trunk and wrist. You have to, of course, account for all three in your answer in order to get, you know, head towards full marks. If you only talk about one or two, you're going to be missing some marks. And then lastly, the question always directs you towards a specific position or movement. And in this example, it said, from standing to forward bend, and it also shows you in an image. There's always an image to help you understand what it's asking you to analyze. So that's the interpretation of the question. We know it's question 11. We know it's eight marks. We know that question 11 is only about the skeletal system. We know from this, this phrase, the axial and appendicular skeleton, you've got to refer to that in your answer. We know that it's going to direct you towards three joints or three body parts, and we know it will specifically want you to talk about a certain positional movement. Talk about anything apart from that, and it's irrelevant. You may well, by this point, have done some practice in movement analysis tables where you've had an exam question or an image and you've been allocated certain joints to look at, and you've got to fill in the table with factual information. This will be done loads and loads and loads in anticipation of your example, because this should be easy marks for you. It's learning facts about the skeletal system. We've typically learned about the joint classifications, whether it's fibrous, cartilaginous, or synovial. I've added a, a column here um, to acknowledge whether each joint is related or part of the axial or appendicular skeleton because that's obviously specific to this uh, question 11. We need to know what type of joint it is. Is it ball and socket? Is it hinge? We need to know the bones that articulate at the joint. So what bones make up that joint? And we need to know what movement happens and in what plane that movement is in. 
Now I've left this, uh, these columns in, these muscular columns in, but I've purposely grade them because for question 11, they're not relevant. They will be relevant for question 12, but I just wanted to acknowledge that here, they're not relevant. So basically, once you've interpreted your question and you know that it's axial appendicular, you know it's question 11, you know it wants these three joints, you can, as a plan, mentally or actually on your paper, know that you've got to basically complete this information. So it'd be really good practice to remember how this sort of format, if you like, for preparing your answer. The other thing I just uh, want to show you here is that I've made red these letters, skeleton, joint, B for bones, P for plane, M for movement. And that's really relevant to the acronym that I'm going to show you. I feel slightly uncomfortable doing this, given what it is. But this is a, a, a sort of a very silly way of trying to help you remember the content you've got to include. S, J, B, P, M, or M, P, whichever way around. So here it is, the question 11 acronym, the, the strategy that you might want to use to help you remember what information has got to be in your question 11 eight marker answer. This you might recognize as the young Mr. Bieber. Um, and if you can ingrain this image in your head, that might help prompt you to remember this. Sexy Justin Bieber plays music. Sexy Justin Bieber plays music. As true or untrue as that is, Remember it, learn it. It could be the way that helps you remember that you've got to talk about the axial and the appendicular skeleton. So obviously the S of sexy relates to the S of skeleton. The question specifically says, analyze the axial and appendicular skeleton. So you must. So S is for skeleton. J is for the type of joint. Is it ball and socket, hinge, condyloid? B is for bones. What are the articulating bones at this joint? P is for what plane of movement does the M movement occur in? Okay, so it's exactly the same information that we need, just a really silly way of remembering it, but it prompts you hopefully to remember those bits of information to include in your answer. So let's go back to our exam question. Some of you may be able to um, go straight into writing your eight marker answer without doing a table of preparation. Some of you may it may be worth investing a moment or two or a minute or two to complete that table and then write. It depends how you feel about it, but it's good practice and it's a good way of picturing the information you need to include. Even if you remember the acronym, that's a really good way to do it. The next thing I want to show you is, well, how do we translate that? I understand now from my question interpretation what it wants from me. I understand from my acronym, Sexy Justin Bieber Plays Music, that I've got to talk about those bits of information for each of those three joints. So I've got to do Sexy Justin Bieber Plays Music for the shoulder and the trunk and the wrist. How then might I write that in sentences? So I just want to show you what I would call a writing frame. And the way that we can use this is basically a sort of a, a vague structure of sentences that relate to each of those bits of information you've got to convey. So here's our acronym, Sexy Justin Bieber Plays Music. Here's our proper terminology, skele skeleton. So talking about the axial or the ap appendicular skeleton, joint type, bones, articulating, planes of movement, and the movement that happens itself. So in terms of the skeleton, you could say the whatever joint it is, the shoulder I think was the first one from the exam question, is part of the blah blah skeleton, which is primarily for blah blah. So the um, shoulder joint is part of the appendicular skeleton, which is primarily for movement of the arms. Okay, so this framework will work. Whatever joint, whether it's axial or appendicular, and then what it's primarily for. The axial skeleton is for protection of the internal organs or to attach our appendices, our appendages to, our limbs to. Then we've got the J, Justin, the J for what type of joint. So you'd carry on. Your next sentence would be, it is a blah, blah joint and is structured to allow how much range of movement or stability. So if it's the shoulder, it's a ball and socket joint, that's the type of joint it is, and it's structured to al allow a large range of movement, but therefore is quite 
unstable or is less stable. So really just if you can add in information about range of movement, stability or function to do with the joint, that's great. Next then, the B, B for the articulating bones. So the, the uh, then you would name the bones here. So you would say the scapula, the humerus, the clavicle are the articulating bones. And they are, you could add and show off what you know, whatever types of bones they are. So long bones or irregular bones, which are structured primarily for movement. If they're long bones, it's for movement. Plays is for planes of movement. Music on the M is for the movement type itself. So I've put these two together in a sentence because they do naturally go together. So the movement created is, I can't remember the action now, the shoulder, I think it's flexion at the in the sagittal plane. So flexion at the shoulder joint in the sagittal plane, which divides the body into left and right halves. The sagittal plane divides the body into two sides, left and right sides. So this silly acronym prompts you to think about the information you've got to include and then what you can start practicing is putting it into sentences that might look like this. They don't have to and they don't have to be word for word at all. So that's just a suggestion for a writing frame to perhaps play around with. Just lastly then I want to show you the mark scheme to the question. And here we have it. So the mark scheme itself was presented in part as a table. So the tabular information is there. Hopefully you had that. It actually annoys me it's put the cartilaginous in there as a type of joint. That's a classification of joint. Gliding is a type of synovial joint. Cartilaginous is a classification in itself, but there you go. Um, so it's got some information as a table but also it's got some sentences here. So for each of those three joints, it's gone through and made some statements. It's acknowledged the axial or appendicular skeleton. It's said what type of joint it is, and it's acknowledged that the shape of the bones affects the, or, or the um, joint function. It's told you it's flexion at the shoulder. It's commented on the range of movement. And actually, it's added some good knowledge on ligaments. So the shoulder is heavily reliant on ligaments um, giving stability. So if you can add little snippets of extra information like the ligaments there, bonus, brilliant, that will give you a, be a slightly better quality answer. And it's gone through the same pattern. What I suggested, you just pause the video, have a look at the mark scheme. It's pretty much approaching it in a similar way, talks about the plane, talks about the movement, talks a little bit about joint structure in some cases, um, and there you have it. I've put on here a couple of other, so this ligaments information was slightly additional information. Other possible comments you could make is you could comment on the structure of the joint. So the shoulder, whilst it is a ball and socket like the hip, it's shallower than the hip, which means that it's probably got bigger range of movement, but is less stable. So show off some really top level advanced knowledge there. Um, if you're talking about the trunk, the lumbar vertebra are larger because, you know, they're thicker chunkier vertebrae because they have to deal with shock absorption whilst protecting the spinal cord. So you can show some extra additional information there. You could also talk about from going to standing to forward bending, its gravity is acting through the upper the trunk, the upper body, to increase the range of movement at the trunk. So gravity helps you move fall forward or bend forward further. But that's again quite advanced information. So we've got our sexy Justin Bieber plays music, factual information incorporated in written in sentences. The last thing I just want to point out is that these extended questions, the question 11s and the question 12s, are marked by levels. So it's not a marker point that you make. It's not that at all, unlike the shorter answer questions. It's what we call levels marking. So your examiner will read your information your paragraphs, and I would recommend that when you write it, you write each um, joint as a separate paragraph, separate them really clearly. So it reads through each of them, and then it would determine whether you're level one, level two, or level three. And I've just put the information for level three here at the moment, which would get you top marks. So what they're looking for is for you to demonstrate accurate knowledge and understanding, getting the facts right. 
breaking down the situation into component parts, and most of the points will be made relative to the context of the question. Remember I, I said, you've got to break it down into the axial skeleton and refer to that, because that or the appendicular skeleton, because they wanted that information from the question. If you don't mention that, it's not specific to the question con context. Or if you don't talk about movement from bending to, sorry, standing straight to bending forward, that's the context of the question. And then lastly, it says displays a developed and logical analysis, which is clear, oh, I've lost that, which is clearly laid out. So it's not confusing to read is what they mean. Final, final point. The examiner's report gives you examples of students' answers. So I know that this uh, answer got six marks, and it does give you information as to how they got their marks. Now, again, pause the video and, and have a read through this yourself. But I put beneath my examiner's report slides what the examiners said. So this, this particular question got six marks out of eight. It tells you what people, students typically answered like, what they did well, what they did wrong. And it gives a sense of where the student may have got it right or wrong. This question is uh, they got two marks out of eight. So you can see it's quite helpful guidance to gauge how to go about answering this eight mark question 11. So just to sum up, question 11 will always be about analyzing the axial and appendicular skeleton, skeletal, not muscular. It will always direct you towards three joints. It will always tell you the positional movement it wants you to focus on. And Perhaps your strategy for making sure you include the right information is thinking about sexy Justin Bieber playing music.